The next technique that we're going to discuss is mortaring. How to do it, we're to be a little cautious in regards to um, body parts, some things to look at in regards to making sure that we don't destroy our gun in the process of doing this. Typically, we know we have an issue of mortaring because when we bring the gun up and we go to fire, we get that click and immediately we do that push pull that we talked about. We go to rack and all of a sudden, man, I can't budge that charging handle at all. So at that point, I'm going to have to mortar the gun. And what we look at is, especially if the stock is in an all the way out position, we want to collapse that and we want to protect this tube. If we end up striking the ground and bending that tube, then the bolt carrier group's not gonna be able to go all the way back and therefore this gun's gonna pretty much be done until we can get a new tube on it. So, couple things. The moment in which we realize we have to mortar the gun, we take whatever stock length we have and we immediately collapse it. Then when we go to hit it on the ground, we hit it on this portion. What's backed up by the actual tube, we try not to mortar it on the corner of the stock. I want to utilize the leverage and the weight of the gun in order to drive this straight down. So there's no need for me to hit the corner of this and still possibly risk bending that buffer tube. So with that, as soon as we realize that we have an issue, close the stock and then when we go down to the ground in order to hit the stock, we hit it directly in the back. <clears throat> Couple things I find that can help you get some traction on this, an ambidextrous charging handle. So uh, this one just happens to be by Geisley, just enough to be able to get both my fingers and my thumb on the charging handle is what I like. I like something that I can get a little bit better purchase on. So generally anything that's out on the market that's more of an ambidextrous charging handle is gonna help aid you in this. Uh, nevertheless, my stock is closed, and if we were to just watch what happens when I start doing this, you can start seeing that the bolt group is starting to flex and move just based on me hitting it on the ground. Now, I'm going to take that same, uh, that same portion of hit, and I'm going to grab the charging handle right here, and then, watching my face, because this is a short barrel, and what has a tendency to happen with people that are a little more in inexperienced, is you hit the ground and you put your face over it. Remember, as soon as you clear that one out of the chamber, you're letting it go, which rechambers a live round. So again, keep your face and body parts out of the way. I like to do this with just a little bit of a hit. Make sure I've got a good, good purchase on that charging handle. Don't just take this thing zero to 100 and hit this. I wanna make sure that I've got a good grip. So I'll hit it, I've got a good grip. Now, that one's out. New one goes in, and of course, the gun's ready to rock and roll. Then I'd have to get my stock back out to a better firing position from here. Worst case, I fire hasty with it closed. So again, one of the things that we want to do is not only watch out uh, in regards to our face, where the muzzle is, of course, that goes into rule number two, never let your muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy. And then from there, once we have closed the stock and we're targeting that just the, the back end of the gun, I want to just give a little hit because I find a lot of times people think they have a good grip and they don't. And as soon as they give a little bit of a hit, the hand slips off. So just give a little hit, see what you got, and then just work it from there and you can start getting more aggressive as need be. Now, if you finally do get it locked to the rear and that casing's still in there, then you're going to need something like a solid um, rod to punch the barrel. And some of these other things that we keep in our kit, like those, um, um, those like little foamy ones that you drop down the barrel and you pull back and forth, that doesn't work for stuff casing. So I like carrying more traditional uh, cleaning rods with me in the event that I need to punch that barrel. Now the barrel itself isn't really that big, um, but you might be able to find something out in an urban environment if you ever had time later on, uh, and that might be a car antenna or something like that, or a coat hanger uh, from a house or whatever it is to punch down the barrel. So just think about some other things. Uh, what do you need to do to get back on track and to get this gun back up and running? So nevertheless, that's what we do for a stuff casing. This last malfunction, in my opinion, is a very rare malfunction. 
I don't see it really happen uh, at all. I know we train for it. Uh, that way we have a solution in the event that something happens. And remember nowadays, we, especially the civilian community, have the ability to go and purchase mil spec guns and uh, proper upkeep and the environments that we're in is not gonna be the same as a person in the military in a gun that has who knows how many thousands upon thousands of rounds that are run through it, poor magazines, uh, the barrels almost shot out, all these other factors that we don't generally have to contend with. So with that said, we still need to know this technique, which is a, a, a bolt over carrier, and how to fix it because we, may, <clears throat> we might not be utilizing our gear. We may be battlefield picking up somebody else's stuff and having to utilize it and you never know the condition that it's going to be in. So we always want to go to. Nevertheless, this is what it looks like. You can see it up in there and I'm going to break the gun apart in a second and show you what this is. Now remember we said that I bring the gun up, I look ID because this is a dead trigger. Just like an empty magazine is a dead trigger, bolt over carrier is a dead trigger, double feed's a double, uh, um, double feed is a dead trigger and of course when we look at... Um, uh, inline stovepipe, it's a dead trigger. So nevertheless, once I identify that, this one's a little bit of an oddity. So the first thing that we end up doing is mag comes out of the gun. We orientate the gun in this case down because we want gravity to help us here. Now my thumb is at the bottom of the ping pong paddle. You can do it that way. You can shift the gun over to the other shoulder and you can utilize your trigger finger as well. I pull back on a charging handle. Ultimately, I'm trying to get the bolt to lock on the actual catch and then from here I'm karate chopping and trying to hit the charging handle in a forward position and therefore now the gun is completely cleared and here's my casing right here. So part of this is utilizing that friction to your advantage. If I were to ride the charging handle forward that's not the same. The charging handle basically I've got this connected here into bolt groups right here. So what I'm trying to do is with the charging handle, drive this forward to create enough friction to get this out. I'm gonna break the gun down so you can see what it looks like internal. So what's happening internally? This is what it looks like right here. Everything's jammed and wedged in together. And what happens is if we don't look and ID this properly and you start going and treating it like a double feed and you go rack, 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 you're gonna take and beat the brass into this area of the bolt group right here. And what's typically gonna happen is the casing is gonna start to fillet open and it's gonna wedge in there to the degree that where it's really gonna take a lot of time and some tools in order to get this apart. So what we're looking at doing or what's happening when we do that particular technique is we are locking the bolt to the rear and then as soon as the bolt's locked to the rear, we are driving the charging handle forward to create that separation. So this technique needs to be handled in a slightly different manner. And that's why looking at ID is extremely important. 